guys, for the second video, I'm going to show you a little bit uh, newer technology. So we're, we're still with the Tech 2. And at this point, uh, I've pre-connected some things up here. I've got connected to the diagnostic interface uh, this unit accessory for the Tech 2 called a Candy Module, a Controller Area Network Diagnostic Interface. So this connects to the vehicle, and then it connects to the Tech 2. And then in the Tech 2, if we were to go into our SPS system, what I'm going to try to show you here, this particular vehicle we're, we're working on right now, is a 2009 Chevrolet Cobalt. And if we go to request info, what we're going to find out really quick is after we say Chevrolet, well, we don't have anything newer than 2007 that we can select because TIS 2000, which is what the remote mode is set up for, for this particular um, function of the Tech 2, only goes up to 2007, like we were mentioning in the previous video. So how can we update the firmware on the modules for this 2009? Well, we're going to have to go to TIS 2 Web on the internet. So I've got this cable already connected to a laptop over here, and we're going to go ahead and show you how TIS 2 Web works, which replaced TIS 2000. So I'm going to set this guy right next to this laptop, sitting on the passenger seat here. And I'm sitting on a website that's um, www.acdelcotds.com. You know, you don't have to have all this stuff afterwards. You know, just go to that root. Uh, domain they'll take you here and this is a subscription based system it replaced the DVD system of TIS 2000 these quarterly DVDs that went out to the dealer you know, with a website and you basically go in and subscribe for what you want if all you want to be able to do is program uh, modules then you can subscribe on a per vehicle VIN basis for two years for 40 bucks it's a pretty good deal on a newer vehicle uh, if it's an older vehicle it's not a such a great deal you're not going to get any updates after three three years or so maybe four anyway and um, you really don't have a choice, though, because this is the only way to get the access that you need. There's some other things on here. You can get uh, updates to the Tech 2 software and, you know, download that for the PCMCA card that's inside the Tech 2. There's diagnostic systems for newer te uh, technical tools like the MDI and Tech 2 Win, which is a simulator that can simulate the Tech 2 running on an MDI device. And for what we're going to do, we're going to be using this simple subscription an example is presuming that you've paid $40 for your one vehicle. So I'm going to show you this with the garage type subscription, shop type subscription rather, but it'll be the same experience if you just went in here and clicked purchase and, and paid $40 and entered your VIN for the vehicle you want to do. So we go to the tech line information system webpage and we can see some options very similar to what we saw in TIS 2000. So we have a service programming system just like we did over there. So we're going to go into that and it's going to give us like some preliminary information before you start about the level of Java that you have to have on this tech line PC. You know, notice there's that term that GM likes to use whenever you install the software, they like to call it a tech line PC. We're going to go ahead and start SPS, which is a Java based applet. It's going to run within the context of your browser. We're going to say we trust this stuff from General Motors to run on our laptop. It's all good for us. It's going to go out and um, access and download information from the server. So now we get a screen very similar to TIS 2000. There's some other options. The um, multiple diagnostic interface version 1 and version 2, which are other tools that you can use, which are J2534 diagnostic interface compliant. And then we see some Tech 2 options. See, Tech 2 remote would be to use TIS 2 web to do what we showed in the previous video using TIS 2000 with older vehicles. We're going to use a, a legacy pass-through on this older Cobalt because we could have used TIS 2000 if it was an 05, 06, or 07. It's an 09, so we're just going to use legacy pass-through. And this is going to be, I should point out something else here for this. It, to get this working, you're going to want to make sure you click on the settings button down here. And you're going to want to make sure that you go into diagnostic. And you're going to want to make sure that you've gone in and verified that you have auto and this particular 115 200 baud rate for your USB to RS-232 serial adapter that you've got plugged in here otherwise you won't get any communication. Alright that's just the tip to save you some time. Let me go on to the next screen here. It's going to give me some information about getting everything wired up and getting the ignition on. We're already at that point to save some time on this one so I'm just going to click next. So at this point we're connecting up to the GM server and if we look over at the Tech 2 Actually, uh, i got to fill out something here, so hold on. Let me go back over here. So very similar to the Tech 2, if you look at the screen on the browser, we're going to have to pick the make, and we're going to have to pick 
the year like we we had to do from the um, the screen on the Tech 2 handheld unit we're gonna have to make these same selections so that it can verify VIN information is correct so we've gone in and picked 2009 passenger car Cobalt Chevrolet it's communicating with the server again and communicating with the Tech 2 now if we look at the Tech 2 sitting over here right next to the laptop on the passenger seat you can see there's some icons going on indicating that there's some communication happening with the laptop while it goes and configures it for what we're going to need to do. So we're just going to wait a minute. You know, on, on the laptop here, it just says, please wait. Uh, we hear some beeping now from the instrument panel indicating there's some communication with the vehicle control unit. And now we're back to the screen that we're, we're familiar with from the previous video on TIS 2000 saying, hey, I've got your VIN. Confirm this is the right vehicle you want to program. It is. I say yes. And now I get a list of the modules I can program. Uh, which is very similar to TIS 2000. So electronic brake control module, I could do an update on that. Engine control module, I could do an update on that. Some of these things are just activation or setup. Radio, I could do a, a programming update on that. And the transmission control module. So let's just pick something easy for this. Let's pick the radio and see if there's a software update for the radio. So I go to the next screen. And then I have to tell, like, what kind of radio do you have? So you've got to... Um, uh, look at your RPO codes, and most vehicles are going. The RPO stickers are going to be in the uh, glove box on this Cobalt. Just a pro tip for you: the RPO sticker is in the trunk on the left-hand side. You got to lift up the carpet. That's where you'll find the sticker. Don't know why they put it on a different place, but in this case, we've got an RPO US8 with UW5 speakers. So we're going to pick that, and now it's communicating with the device. Now that it knows what kind of radio you have. And it's going to go off and figure out, okay, well, let me see if I have any updates for this particular type of radio. And let me go ask the Tech 2. So now the Tech 2 is doing some stuff and connect, connecting over to the radio over the candy module and saying, you know, what firmware are you running, radio? And so instrument panel is beeping, again, confirming that there's been communication. Here's some clicking from the candy module when this is all going on. Okay, so we got everything loaded up. It's confirmed what it wants. We're going to go to the next screen now. And now we get to see what our options are. So if we look at the operating system for the radio, we can see that we're currently running calibration 2599608. That is the original radio operating system from 2009 when it was first manufactured. There's been three updates since with 521 being the most uh, current. And the 521 is new software for increased robustness against no audio conditions. The previous updates that were missing on this vehicle was a new software update to improve the robustness of the user interface. And then if I just scroll down a little bit inside this little Java applet, and the previous one to that was simply a part number change. No service issues were addressed. Okay, so we're missing two software updates that we want to get here. So that's good. So that's the operating system. There's no updates on the tuner. There's also an update on the equalizer. So new calibrations to adjust dimming curves. So this all sounds good. So we notice there's a asterisk next to audio, and that's because the TIS2 web software couldn't figure out if there was a better choice than what you already had. So we currently are running 2599435, which is right here, and it has a newer version below that. It says, new calibrations to address turn-by-turn -turn directions not being loud enough over the radio. Or it could be 209-21013. So it's not able to determine which of these it should go with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go with the one that's closest to what I already have. So I already have 435. And it says 1012 follows 435. So I'm going to go with that because I definitely don't have 436. And with that done, I, I, I've selected what I want to update. And very similar to TIS 2000, we just go to the next screen. It confirms, hey, I'm going to upgrade you from these numbers to these numbers. In some cases, the numbers are the same because there's no upgrade. But we are going to get upgrades here and here and here. So let's go ahead and do that. Say next. And now we can see um, we're downloading information from the GM servers over Wi-Fi initially, and then it's going to communicate over to the Tech 2 once it gets a handshake going on here. Take a, few, a minute or two. You can see there's activity now on the Tech 2 as the Tech 2 is over trying to communicate to the radio and get everything set up to take this update. Once all that handshaking happens, you see over here now we've got a communication uh, setup 
between all of these pieces of gear. So we got you know we got the laptop going USB to 9-pin RS-232 serial over to our Tech 2. And our Tech 2 is over going through our Candy diagnostic interface to the DLC connector on the vehicle. And at this point, we are downloading the update directly into the onboard entertainment system for this 2009 Chevrolet Cobalt. So this guy's gonna keep chugging along here. And uh, again, just like any of these other updates, the, the most important thing that we wanna make sure is that we've got good power so we've got um, we've got a good strong battery it's fully charged um, just like in the previous uh, you know video you want to make sure that you've got alternate power connected to the um, diagnostic cable for your AC adapter for your tech 2 so that you don't have any kind of drama with a power interrupt because if you have any kind of a power interrupt or any kind of a, a glitch with the battery while this is all going on the module that's being programmed could be damaged or you know what we call in the industry it could be bricked and become inoperative so that's that's a really bad day when something like that happens all right so this guy is going to chug along here for a little while and it's 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 not super fast so uh rather than burn up the video here i think i'm going to pause it for a second and we'll come back as soon as this gets over to 100 percent guys <clears throat> we're coming up at the end here the last few bites so we didn't get any glitches. We made it all the way to almost 100%. I just heard the radio kind of power cycle itself. Instrument panel beeped. And we get to the bottom here, excuse me, the end here. And so very similar to what we saw in the previous video with um, TIS 2000. So it says, hey, here's what you did. You completed programming the radio. And uh, here's some information that you might need to be aware of. Now in this case, it's, it's all generic because, you know, what could go wrong with the radio? It's not like you're going to see a crankshaft relearn warning or anything like that if we had done the ECU. So it's just telling you that, hey, you know, if there were any stored codes for the radio, um, they probably have been erased. And if they weren't, you as the technician should probably do that. So at this point, we're done doing this particular update. I'm going to um, turn the key off. I'm going to take the key out going to hold it here for a few moments and then I'm going to put the key back in. I'm going to turn the key back on and I'm going to make sure that I don't get any kind of odd lights on the dash and then I'm going to try to turn the radio on. Sounds fine to me. So we just completed that radio update without any glitches or problems. So I hope this helps you out. This is uh, SPS programming with the Tech 2 in pass-through mode. And if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.